For the world's roughly 3,200 billionaires, life is completely different. A global class of elites, they shut around the world, shaking hands, making deals, and enjoying every possible luxury that you can dream of. As inequality has skyrocketed and more of the world's wealth has been sucked into their bank accounts, we deserve to know what they're doing with our money. So let's dive into the secretive and sobering world of billionaire ultra travel and take a peek into their 2024 calendar of excess. The year began yeah, like it did for me. Yes, you. Yes. You guys said travel and then you tag me in chat. Oh, well, where the fuck do I go, brother? Brother, bro, I'm awake like 30 hours at a time and then sleep for half a day, okay? And I don't, I don't move. Most of us, with the winding down of New Year's celebrations, only the parties that the wealthiest people in the world attend would be completely unrecognizable to you or me. One of the hotspots for the ultra rich to see out the year was St. Bart's, a former French colony in the Caribbean. The picturesque paradise saw Jeff Bezos, Dallas Cowboys owner Jerry Jones, and Bernard Arnault of Louis Vuitton all parking their yachts in the crystal blue water. Along for the ride and to entertain their even wealthier guests, movie stars and famous sports stars like Jennifer Lopez and Michael Jordan also made an appearance. In addition to, of course, Elon Musk. Here they enjoyed gourmet meals made by celebrity chefs, downed bottles of champagne worth more than you could make in a year, and retired to their private yachts for post-celebration celebrations. A lot of the time, the after party is the real party, and the same can be said of the world of billionaires. Often making the connections of the official parties, the ultra-wealthy will retire to their private boats with their esteemed guests and keep the party going. It's in these places of privacy where the deals are made that shape our world from behind the scenes. But why St. Bart's after so many other tropical islands? Well, the answer, yachts. of course, is exclusivity. Gonna... The airport is part of it. Space on the volcanic island is limited, fat land especially so. The incredibly short runway means that only tiny regional airliners or private planes can land. Even just chartering a private jet to the island usually costs upwards of $30,000, and that's just for a small six-seater. Booked in a year and- Bro. Bro. Usually costs- Any regional airliners or private planes can land. Even just chartering a- That's pretty cheap. <laughs> What? Private jet to the island usually costs upwards of $30,000, and that's just for a small six seater booked in a year in advance from New York. If you're Bro, you charter your own jet to go somewhere uh, by itself, it's, it's gonna probably gonna be like around 80k. Coming from further afield, you'll need a larger plane, which will cost far, far more. At the end of the day, though, you can be sure that the people using these services probably wouldn't opt for the budget version anyway. But after the partying is over, it's time to get back to business. The next stop on the billionaire calendar for 2024 was the World Economic Forum in Switzerland, which runs through mid-January. The website advertises conferences on tackling issues such as climate change, creating jobs, and managing AI. Of course, it's all for the cameras. The real action goes on, as always, behind the scenes. The forum acts as a gathering place for world leaders, CEOs, and industry magnates to hash it out and make their conspiracies for increased control. Every year, they descend on the small town of Davos to enjoy the winter skiing and clean mountain. Let's be honest with you. Let's be honest with you, bro. You go in there, brother. You spew some dog shit to the working class, okay? You send everybody on a fucking pipeline dream on some fucking bullshit stocks or whatever the fuck. You go home and you fucking short that piece of fucking dog shit, okay? You go on the stage. You act like the working class can make it somewhere, dude. You boast about dog shit stocks and then you short that sucker, dude. It is what it is. It is what it is. Every year they descend on the small town of Davos to enjoy the winter skiing and clean mountain air not to mention a ridiculous amount of prostitutes. And so of course, to make things exclusive, the World Economic Forum operates on a strict invitation-only basis. On top of that, there's the £52,000 membership fee and the £19,000 ticket cost. Last year in 2023, more than 1,000 private jets also flew in to accommodate the forum. However, this is all a business expense for these people, of course, a drop in the bucket, especially when you imagine how lucrative the deals they've made at these events have been. Although the purpose is business, you can be sure they're gonna be doing some celebrations. The top five richest people have doubled their wealth since 2020. If you're wondering where all the world's money seems to have gone over the pandemic, that's the answer. The rest of the world has been I, left I, in a recession, inflation, that. scrambling around for crumbs that these people leave behind. Meanwhile, they're perfectly happy paying double many people's salaries just for the ability to attend. These are just the tickets. If you're truly going to make a splash all the way to the top, you'll need to arrive in style. For that, you're going to want a private jet again. Chartering a flight from St. Bart's to Zurich, one of the closest major cities, wait, wait, is much more landing, pricey, right? easily running over $100,000. Again, that's booking a year in advance combined with the cheapest option. For transatlantic flights, you need a larger plane, and that only adds to the cost both to your wallet and to the planet. Even then, chartering flights is something the truly rich wouldn't even consider, because as you go up the pyramid, people go from renting these planes to owning a joint stake in one to actually owning the plane outright. The truly rich might even own their own fleet, all to save themselves from suffering the indignity of first class on a commercial airliner. 
But don't make the mistake of believing that buying a plane would make the cheaper option in the long run either. Initially a jet will set you back anywhere near from $3 million to $75 million. If you want to fly across oceans, it will be somewhere on the upper end of the scale. And even with that, you Wait, still need to pay for fuel, maintenance, storage, licenses and documents, True. which adds millions in costs a year. Add in paying Please for a decent pilot along with the cabin crew and it will cost now. even more. But for a millionaire on the upper scale or a billionaire, all these costs are equivalent to the change in your pocket. It's literally pocket change. It's actually less. But first, let me tell you about today's sponsor, Underdog Fantasy. Now, if you don't know, Underdog Fantasy are a low. It's Chat. 50 plus states. Chat, you know what's crazy? Is that he's actually wrong about that. By comparison, a billionaire that has like that amount of money for like a jet or whatever is like much less for them that ride than the pocket change if you make it like a normal salary. With Patrick Mayhomes to go higher than 0.5 total. You want to know why making a 50 and get a window into using the link below. If you want to know why and get a window into how they think, then take a few zeros. Yes, I know who May Holmes is. May Holmes. Zeros off your calculations. The 100k flight we mentioned would bankrupt most people, making a 50k a year salary, which isn't even a bad wage to begin with. But if you're making 50 million a year instead, then it's the equivalent of what paying $100 or something like that would be for a person making 50k a year. Not cheap, but not something that will break the bank either. If you're some billionaire making 500 million a year, then it's like paying $10. You might not even notice it's gone. Knowing this puts into perspective how out of touch and detached from reality these luxury services really get. Amounts Jack. of money that would change Jack. your life. Spend is, I enjoy the airport with friends and shit like that. Is, yes, jets are cool and all, but I enjoy my ride or go to the airport, man. I think it's fun. I think it's part of the experience. Like. I don't, it's why I don't like people that, because I don't like jetting that much. I like going to the fucking airports. And on one eight hour flight, a ticket it's to some chill. secret party or a fancy bottle of wine. But the billionaires aren't thinking about normal people, of course. As the World Economic Forum comes to a close, they're looking towards their next engagements. For some millionaires and billionaires, that might be the Snow Polo World Cup in like, Ritz, another town in the Swiss like Alps. It's a tournament of people playing polo on top of a frozen lake. And to be fair, it's pretty cool and it did begin as a small low budget event, but just like same boss though. This event became a hit with the richest of the rich because of its exclusivity. No peasants came to this because the town is incredibly high up in the mountains, with a tiny airstrip Jam. serving as the most Jam. convenient. I'm very sure because I'm not kidding about this. You know, like um, there's agents, like um, like uh, you know the ones that like pat you down and shit. Okay, the ones that are at the scanner. Okay, I'm telling you, Chad, they're all juicers. I don't know what it is about them, Chad. TSA, TSA that are at the scanner. Everybody, that's like the clerk right there. All juicers, chat. They all watch the stream. They're all they're all watchers of the stream. Almost all of them. I'm not kidding. In way, it's like above a, above coin flip. Using the same restrictions as last time, a chartered flight from Zurich to Saint Moritz costs around six to seven grand. The actual sporting event isn't the main attraction, of course. Instead, it's not an kidding. excuse to put on a pricey fur coat, drink champagne, and enjoy the mountain air away from all the poor people. <laughs> other than these events and some others like the Sundance Film Festival, most billionaires spend their time working on their own companies and enjoying the sun in the Caribbean. A lot of billionaires attend the major sporting events as well. What the hell? Working on their own companies and enjoying the sun in the Damn. He, yo, he's got the cuties and shit. What the heck? The Caribbean. A lot of billionaires attend the major sporting events as well, with the Super Bowl being an obvious favorite. But if you're a billionaire, obviously you're not going to be sitting with the rest of the crowd. Most people want special treatment and their own suite. Oh, yeah, last lame, year cost up to two million dollars for one event. This year, with all the hype around Taylor Swift and the event as a whole, it's likely to be even more. That doesn't include special privileges you won't find advertised on websites, like meeting the players or the management. Through their connections, billionaires can have that as well if they're willing to pay. Add in the private flights, the limo, the food, and one of these events could easily cost up to two to four million dollars. It gets hard to imagine how much money is spent on what amounts to hours of enjoyment. Sums of cash that could keep a family afloat for generations all blown in a single day. But once you begin to Chad, comprehend- Chad, am I wrong thinking that nobody actually goes to the website and actually clicks on buy at like 2.5 million? They probably just have like the good connections and they just talk to them directly. Like nobody, nobody actually just go and clicks on that shit. 
and the sheer amounts of wealth there is at the top of the they pyramid, it becomes in. clear how trivial this is for them. Saving a dollar every single second would only make you a billionaire after 30 years. Is their work really that valuable or is there something else going on here? Well, it's an unfortunate fact that in almost any system of competition working over a long time, the rewards and profits tend to fall into what's called a Pareto distribution. The top 20% of active members in a system will account for 80% of the output and reap 80% of the rewards. It's everywhere from nature to culture to money. The top 20% of the words that people use make up 80% of all words spoken or written down. The top 10% of Twitter users post 80% of all the tweets. And yes, the top 20% of the US owns 80% of the wealth. The scary thing is that the distribution system keeps repeating as you go further up the scale. The majority of musicians never get noticed, while a small subset get all the audience. And a small portion of the most popular musicians make up the lion's share of what people listen to. And even among those artists, only a small portion of their work gets most of the attention. And it's exactly the same with money. The further you go up, the yeah. more they proportionally own. The richest 1% of the country own over half the entire stock market and in 2018, the richest three men in the world own more than the bottom half of Americans. It seems that if you didn't interfere, all the wealth and profits in a system naturally drifts into the hands of the top earners. It's but the process that's given us a billionaire class today, with US billionaires increasing their total wealth by 70% over the pandemic alone. And we can argue about how to fix it all day, but to even attempt it would require major changes in laws, taxes and wealth distribution. And it can end up being some nightmarish socialist scenario. But as it is right now, it means these people get to enjoy the kinds of luxuries that are completely ridiculous to the rest of the world, but don't even dent their bottom lines. But as winter ends and spring draws on, lots of billionaires decide they want to spend their time in the Mediterranean instead of the Caribbean. They avoid hurricanes, and it's far more convenient for other events in the calendar, like the Monaco Grand Prix that gets held in early June. But instead of having to use their second favorite yacht, lots of multi-millionaires and billionaires just ship their most luxurious yeah, yacht halfway across ship. the world instead. Even for a small yacht, the prices are easily going to reach $50,000. And for the super yachts the billionaire class owns... Isn't that crazy, champ? That, that these guys, they buy boats and then they travel by boat to go not boat. The boat doesn't boat and it boats even less to boat even less. It'll be far more. It's a That's ridiculous idea, really. It's what like they do hiring literally. a truck it's to insane. transport your motorbike from one city to another. But it's this kind of absurd level of excess that is completely predictable it's for what they billionaires. Do. I'm not kidding. People at these levels of wealth have seen and done everything they can experience with money. At that point, it becomes more about simulating things that have nothing to do with wealth. It's like cheating in a video game. Everything you want and work so hard for is just now at your fingertips. But because of how easy it all becomes, it gets boring and meaningless so quickly. These people's dopamine systems get fried. And once the rush wears off, you just turn them back off and create new challenges for yourself, new experiences. And the Titan submersible me, disaster hello? is an example of how this can go terribly wrong. The people who went underwater and weren't forced into it by their family were so engaged in the experience that they must have been oblivious to how crazy this truly was. Now, of course, hindsight is 2020, and this was a completely tragic disaster, a horrific event for humanity. But somehow nobody looked at the video game controller and the awful design and immediately rethought their decision. The 250 grand they paid for the ticket might have played some part in it. Most of the time, though, we won't hear about these stunts because nothing goes wrong with them. Furtenbach Adventures is one company specializing in this kind of sanitized danger. One of their survivalist joyrides. Okay, hot take, hot take. The, the, the whole fucking, oh dude, um, chat. The whole people being dumb about. <laughs> Sorry. Chat. Everybody's being hindsight heralds. Chat, everybody's acting from hindsight like they know better. Like, oh dude. Obviously, you shouldn't, have, you shouldn't have done this, like, when it's just, it's just one event. Yeah, it's, it's like, it was super risky, but still. Is a VIP uh, signature major. package for climbing Everest Cuts. at the low, low cost of only $200,000. The package includes every possible comfort before. you can physically have getting up the mountain as well as your own personal guided experience and two personal Sherpas to carry your bags. The best time to climb the mountain is in April to May to avoid the worst weather, with hundreds and hundreds of people making the climb every year. It's a good example of things you'll find throughout the millionaire and billionaire excursion industry. While the actual experience would be challenging for anyone, most of it's just a mirage. The Sherpas and your guide will do the heavy lifting and the actually dangerous work, laying ladders and clearing a path for you as you head up the mountain. 
They'll carry your bags yeah, and make sure that your heated tent is ready at the end of the day. Billionaires do these things for the same reason normal people do them, to make themselves feel more alive. But in the case of the ultra wealthy, it's a far more desperate need. Their lives are so alien and disconnected from reality that they need to get a simulated version of danger to keep themselves entertained. And they've also got too much time to fill. They can leave their businesses to run themselves pretty much whenever they want. Once they're at the point of making it into the Forbes list, they're at a point of being able to sit back and read the rewards. Once the ultra wealthy are done having their fun over spring, it's time for more business, jetting from country to country and visiting their offices around the world. But a date that nearly all of them have booked in is the Sun Valley Conference in mid-July. The conference was founded in the 80s and has been held in rural Idaho ever since. It's run by one of the most secretive and well-established investment firms in the world, who themselves are a complete Idaho. enigma. The conference is called the Informal Summer Camp for Billionaires and their Entourages, and for a good reason. Bill Gates, Mark Zuckerberg, Rupert Murdoch, and many other top billionaires have either attended or given guest lectures behind closed doors. Completely off limits to the public or any prying reporters, it's pretty much a mystery what actually happens at this retreat. All we know is that pretty much anybody who's anybody in the secretive world has at least been once, kind of like Bohemian Grove. Tons of world-shaping deals are said to have taken place at the conference, like Bezos buying out the Wall Street Journal or Disney and ABC merging together. Often though, it's simply the conversations that occur here which become the starting point for major deals in the future. Other than being incredibly fancy, you might not recognize it's a place of such concentrated financial power. It's more like a party at a massive skiing lodge, as billionaires take the time to play golf or go fishing, then lay the foundations of business deals that will strengthen their grip on power. The three-day event is a roller coaster of collusion and plotting, which all the billionaires fly to visit. If you want to see the largest number of private jets in just one place, this would be a good bet. The amount of fuel burned to money spent on these just are, the transport cool. to this trumped up party would be well into the tens of millions. It's a cost that the billionaire class will happily bear. When such lucrative deals could be made. Other than the Sun Valley Conference, billionaires spend their summers visiting places that the Jam, rest of us don't Jam, have access to. Jam, Jam, what if, what if put up spike strips on that on the fucking Shock. And this is part of the draw of yachts. It means they can cruise around the Mediterranean, find some secluded beach away from the public, and enjoy their own private paradise. Of course, that's if they're away from their own private islands. Owning an entire island is the end game for the rich. It's almost like owning your own country. It ensures complete privacy, complete control, and we all know what that can entail for these people, but a new use for these islands has been as a personal retreat in the event of a complete collapse. A safe place to take friends and loved ones, with all the amenities and comforts that these people expect. Now Zuckerberg is leading the charge on this, with his Hawaii based 270 million- Shit, I don't know how people don't get homesick. Shit, why don't people- how do they not get homesick? Guys, I leave- I leave the house and I'm not like near like a city for like a couple hours and I start fucking going mauled billion dollar survival compound. It's already been over a decade in the making. First, Zuckerberg brought up massive tracts of land on and around the site. Then the construction began, mansions, spas, swimming pools, and various living spaces. The site has over a dozen buildings with everything you need to survive for a lifetime. Then there's the underground bunker, equipped with a blast-proof door, as well as facilities for self-sufficient food and energy. Chap, what does it matter if everything's breaking down and you're in your bunker, right? And you have all that if you don't have the person you love the most to hold. That's in addition to all the security features, tons of cameras, secret rooms, and hidden escape tunnels. The people building this for him are all sworn to secrecy and have signed ironclad NDAs. And he's been able to keep this a secret for over a decade, as it's not something he wants other people to know about. It says a lot that billionaires are preparing themselves for the world to end. Maybe they know something we don't. Or maybe it's because of their obsession with safeguarding and extending the life they have. Tons of them are obsessed with health and extending their lifespan. People like Brian Johnson are popping up all over the place. These freaky people taking their son's own blood to rejuvenate their health. But the one thing they can't control is their life. They will never be able to buy eternal life, but they can still have a hand in causing other people's deaths, at least indirectly. You see, one Hawaiian native was contracted to work at the compound as a security guard, keeping watch over a beach nearby. After a 12 hour shift, he waited to be picked up as normal and taken home, but because of weather conditions, the pickup never came. So his only option was to climb the hill the compound is situated on to reach the exit, but he actually never made it up. He suffered a heart attack during the steep climb and later died at a nearby hospital. His family's wrongful death lawsuit has taken years because of the countless NDAs and secrecy measures. In fact, the family weren't even aware he was ill until they found out he had already died. Despite the incident occurring nearly five years ago in 2019, the trial will take place in June of 2024. But if this is all just coming out now about Zuckerberg, what are other people doing? It's rumored Sergey Brin has taken similar measures, and you can only guess what other people are doing on their personal islands. Now, by the end of summer and the beginning of autumn, this means one thing for billionaires, the Monaco Yacht Show. Held during the last week of September, it's a gathering place for people 
people to buy, sell, rent, and admire super yachts. Now, I've already made a video going over what actually happens on these yachts, but to enjoy the fun, you have to be part of the in crowd, of course. In the same way as the Monaco Grand Prix, it's another opportunity for the top 1% of the 1% to look, sh- Look, brother, brother. They're both supposed to fucking go into the water and shit. Monaco Grand and like, Prix, and like, it's another opportunity for- Brother, people ship their fucking yachts to go park them like- like this. I don't I don't get this. Isn't this just fucking brain dead, dude? For the top 1% of the 1% to show off their wealth in front of their peers. Last year, more than $4 billion worth of various vessels were on show. The largest boat there, the 115 meters long, AFO, cost at least two and a half million to charter for just one week. For billionaires, it's often the last stop in the Mediterranean tour before the weather changes for good. It. Then it's time as we've mentioned. One does not watch F1. Watching F1 is like a fucking it suddenly doesn't even make sense. You cannot watch F1. When you go there physically, you don't see shit. Brother, I'd better watch it on TV. Earlier ...to have their yacht shipped to the Caribbean instead, or other exotic equatorial places. And obviously, whilst this is terrible for the environment, these are the people lecturing you on why you need carbon taxes and need to turn off the I lights didn't. for the- Bro, you said you did it. I didn't. It. Brother, I was in a lounge with fucking- What's that again? Dude, bro. Eric Andre or whatever the fuck, watching a shit on the TV. <laughs> I'm environment. I'm not gonna the walk hypocrisy is just so I'm insane. Not, when you really look at the lifestyle of the people lecturing you from the World Economic Forum, the people complaining that use plastic straws, have a diesel car, or leave the tap on occasionally, all the while billionaires emit more carbon emissions in one cruise than most people will in a lifetime. And then at the end of the year, billionaires will usually settle down for a few key big events. One of these is the phrase Masters Art Show in London. The premier place for the rich and powerful to buy artwork that confirms their place at the top. From ancient relics to modern masterpieces, everything's available that's worth showing off to these people. Art dealers and collectors will shop with anything that's too expensive to sell at other shows. They'll be hoping to catch the eyes of one of the multi-millionaires or billionaires that frequent the show. And of course, the show has pricey tickets, probably to scare away the protesters we've seen at more public galleries. But if you can afford it, it's often the only chance to see these things of beauty in person. That's before they're carted away and sold off to some private collection, doomed well, art is worthless, but a cool piece is cool. A little bit about price it is and who made it. A cool piece is a cool piece. If you, if you have a house and you're trying to furnish it and you find a cool piece of art and it's like kind of cheap, it's baller as fuck. It doesn't matter who, it matter who did it. But there. I'm like a big fan of like things you can touch and have and like a cool art, right? And it's cool to have a cool one, but that doesn't mean that it's expensive. To collect dust. Some They're of most it is for pieces sure. for these people. Some of it is. It's another way to simulate that exclusive, one of a kind feeling that all billionaires are chasing. But ultimately, this concludes most of the years for billionaires. The end of the year is usually a quieter period, and their travel plans are at least the parts which aren't completely hidden from view, then continue on into the next year and the next year. The defining trait in all of their travel plans and events is exclusivity and privacy. No peasants allowed. They don't want people to know what their lives are like. They don't want people complaining. They don't want people realizing how hypocritical they are. They just want to be left alone undisturbed. They exist in their own class, living in- Oh, you don't agree with me? Okay. Ah. In a world you can't even imagine. It's a separate existence depend- Bro, this is it. Bro, you're not an intellect, man. Of course you don't understand art. What's this guy? What's this guy? Oh, he's gone. Bro, one does not understand art. That's like, that's like, a, that's like an, an oxymoron or some shit. Nobody cares. It's whatever you want it to be. Whatever it is for you, that's what it is. Right? If you look further than that, you're brain dead. Actually, if you, if you look past that, right? And you look past that take, you're fucking, you're the one who's like anti-intellect. How's it not true? Art is whatever it is. It's for me, this, this is, has value, and I like this, and I want this, right? That's all I need to know. That's all I need to think about. There's nothing else that matters but that. That's my take. And then on yet ignoring all the hard work and sacrifice that everyone else puts into society. The only way you can fight it is by being aware of how hypocritical this really is. How hypocritical our government leaders, billionaire elites, and Hollywood celebrities truly are when they preach to the public about social changes. But until people realize the true extent of the hypocrisy, they'll continue to be free to sail around the world on everyone else's dime. Apart Hold on, let me, let me look at these watches. True extent of the Dog shit, poor. Hypocrisy, they'll continue to be free.
poor and poor. Free to sail around the world and everyone else is dying. A perfect example of how our society is being shaped to their whims. It's like when Bezos demanded a historic bridge be torn down for his yacht to pass through. Thankfully, it never actually happened. Oceano, a company that specializes in building the mega yachts for these people, has some facilities. See, he knows. Yep, that's right. I know, I know Chef knows his watches. Hey, yo, Chef, you wanna, you wanna flex your shit or what? You wanna flex it? Facilities up the river from Rotterdam. And so the plan was to build the yacht there, then sail it through Rotterdam's port and out to sea. He's the like, only no. problem was how massive the ship actually was. The $500 million vessel is 127 meters in length. For context, that's how tall the Great Pyramid of Giza is. Add in the planned height for the masts, and it's way too big to fit under any European bridge, especially the one they wanted to take down which was approaching its 100th birthday. Of course, no expense is too small for these people, but it must have been cheaper for Bezos to try and pay off the city to dismantle the landmark bridge instead of moving the boat halfway through construction. And his plan nearly went ahead. It was only after a massive wave of public pushback that it was scrapped. This is the same man whose company is currently pushing $20,000 shanty town shacks as their solution to the housing crisis. The whole incident is proof of a war where politicians are cheap and billionaires are happy to spend millions on things like private flights. And so of course, why wouldn't they pay to have history demolished and culture rejected in Europe? Brother and brother, they may have poor watches, but they are rich in life while you sit in a room with no one but the crowd that hate, that hate watches you. Brother, brother, they are on yachts full of people that don't care about them, doing shit they don't care about, wearing things they don't even like, partaking in actions they don't want to do, Portraying it to people that don't give a fuck about them. Brother, you're you're just you're just you're bugging it. I'm doing exactly what I want to be doing. I wouldn't be doing it if it was not what I wanted to be doing. I could have retired like five years ago. I lived the life exactly how I wanted to live. Like the place I do. So they can pilot their oversized yacht through the city. And it all begs the question, how much are billionaires really spending every year or even every day? All of the astronomical figures we've mentioned today are just the tip of the iceberg. And while it's hard to get a concrete number on what these people Last spend- Last pause, on they don't have bitches. Most of them. Okay. That shit is, it's an, it's an illusion. Okay. Everybody can get bitches and fuck bitches. Everybody can do that. Okay. If you give somebody money, maybe they fuck. Dude, but do they have somebody to hold them? to like, to care about them. Uh. Average, there are some clues. One of them is Sam Wiley, a former billionaire who lost his fortune overindulging beyond his means. And court records showed he was spending nearly $4 million a month. Along with all the luxuries we've discussed already, he was spending over 500 grand a year on his personal house key and two ghost writers for his so-called autobiography. His biggest problem though was that he was a billionaire living like a multi-billionaire. He was a small fry compared to some other people we've mentioned. With their globetrotting mega yacht lifestyles, their monthly expenses will be far more than just $4 million in a month. Um, I'm not going to debate you on this. You want to know why? Life is what you make it. Okay? It's not up to a debate. Life perspective is not, it's not up really to, to discussion. Find what life is for you, what makes sense for you. And you won't ever have to explain it to anybody. If anybody actually explain it, you don't, you don't have to. You don't owe any explanation. And if, if, if you explain it to them and they don't understand it, here's what it is. You win because you live life on your own terms, you know? You're winning every day. So why, why I want to win their approval? What's this called? <laughs> 